1.5 million Palestinians are trapped in the largest open-air prison in the world, denied basic rights, the freedom of movement, the right to receive medical attention, to receive an adequate education, even the right to basic foodstuffs. And this is why we have organized the Freedom Flotilla, a coalition of organizations around the world that have organized boats to challenge Israel's illegal blockade on the Gaza Strip. We will be sailing from different ports around the Mediterranean, converging at a certain point, and then making our way to Gaza. Knowing that the Israeli Navy, one of the most powerful militaries in the world, is blockading the Gaza Strip, but knowing that this blockade is illegal and our respective countries have been doing nothing about it. What we have today is modern day crimes against humanity, and it seems like the international community is silent. So when our governments fail to uphold values that we believe in to defend human rights, we believe that we, the people of the global community, must take action. And that is what we're going to do. And today I'm sitting here in front of one of the boats that will be on this flotilla. We're on the island of Crete. We have boats in Athens. We have a boat that sets sail from Ireland, and we have boats that will set sail from Turkey. We will be about 700 people but thousands and tens of thousands more help to make this possible. And it needs to be done. Israel's threatening to attack us, to use force if necessary, when it's obvious that we are average civilians. We don't constitute any threat except for the fact that we want to stand up for the right of the Palestinian people to lead a life with dignity, to be able to live. Israel's policies vis-a-vis -vis Gaza and vis-a-vis -vis the occupied Palestinian territory are not only illegal, they're criminal and immoral, and it's about time that the international community broke its silence. We're about to do that, and I hope more people will join us. So this is not the, it, it's not the first, they're not the first votes to go to Gaza, and hopefully they won't be the last. And working together, we know that we can end the siege, and not only the siege of Gaza, but the occupation of Palestine, which we need to do if we are going to see a, a time and a place where people live in peace. On this flotilla we will have four cargo ships and five passenger boats. Our cargo ships will be loaded with mainly rebuilding supplies and education supplies. Rebuilding supplies because in December and January 2009 Israel unleashed its massive firepower on the Gaza Strip destroying thousands of homes, schools, mosques, um, hospitals. And now it's been almost a year and a half after this massive destruction and the Israeli authorities have not opened the borders of Gaza to allow people to import the supplies that they need to rebuild. And so people are still living on the rubble of their homes. Hospitals cannot bring in cement in order to expand their facilities. Israel destroyed water wells and they can't bring in cement in order to repair these. The sanitation system in Gaza is a mess and the Internet, the World Health Organization approximates that only about 5% of the water in Gaza is even uh, up to standard, international standards. And therefore, in, that's on the rebuilding side. On the education supply, paper is denied, books, pencils. The Israeli authorities don't let the people of Gaza import this. Why? What does this have to do with security? Why can't children study? So most of our boats will be laden with these supplies, but we will also be bringing in medical supplies that also the Israeli authorities don't let into Gaza. Wheelchairs, motor scooters for the disabled, and basic things like toys for kids. Palestinians in Gaza aren't allowed to import toys for their children. This is, again, an immoral policy. Uh, and we will be taking 10,000 tons, almost, of these supplies. And our goal isn't just to deliver humanitarian supplies to Gaza, but it is very much to challenge the policies that leave Palestinians in Gaza in need of humanitarian supplies. Now, the people of Gaza don't want to live on handouts, but Israel's policy have left the situation. They've created a man-made humanitarian crisis. About 80% of the population of Gaza now cannot survive without handouts. They are food insecure. And this is a situation that is deliberately created. And therefore, we don't want to perpetuate it by just delivering humanitarian aid. We want to challenge the policy and assert the right of the Palestinian people to have access to the outside world so they can make, make relations, so they can produce, so they can import materials, make things and export. Right now, that is all denied. Things that we take for granted it is denied to 1.5 million people, and this has to stop. This action is only be, going to be successful if people around the world 
help us and people around the world join in. It is not only the 700 people that are going to be aboard this ship that are going to make it happen, but it has to be the tens and hundreds of thousands of people around the world that watch these ships and that put pressure on their media, on their local representatives to pressure the Israeli authorities not to attack us or otherwise intercept us. They have threatened to attack, they've threatened to detain us, arrest us all. And we're not afraid, we're not going to turn back, but again, we need you to make this happen. There are protests right now being organized in front of Israeli embassies around the world and to put pressure to, on the Israeli authorities not to intercept our boats. Please keep up with us, watch our progress on two websites, freegaza.org, www.freegaza.org or www.witnessgaza.com and you'll be able to monitor the progress of our boats and know firsthand up to the minute what is happening with us. Please be ready to take action. We need you.